look to it where the, the lines are longer. It's drawing off the reef of just a little more. So good news for our, our four finalists. And what a day for Gavin Beshin. Late call up for the event. He's into the final now. Has an opportunity to crack the main event of the Billabong Pipe Masters. Well, some movement here at the takeoff zone. Looking at Pipe. This is Finn McGill. Had a great last heat. And he's kicking off the final in good form. He's going to find the exit here. Running hot after scoring a 9.5 just moments ago. Here we go, some more action here. Taking off Joshua Moniz. Too deep. If he comes out of this thing, it's going to be a 10-point ride. You can see him getting slurped up over the falls there. He's going to put up a pretty solid number. Let's check out the replay. Well, a good technique from Finn. Uh, dragging his rear end in the wall, kind of slowing himself down just to get covered up. Not the best pit you've ever seen, but a nice little barrel. The good news for Finn is it's a sizey wave. Out the back though, this wave was a gem. That had a giant score written all over it, but you could see that wave breathed. It was really tough to navigate. See how this thing kind of puffs up right here, expands from the, bike wash, from the back wash, and then it contracts back to, back to its normal size. So when the barrel breathes like that, it creates all these chandeliers. You can see that barrel is really messy. It didn't stay wide open. Two-point ride for Joshua Mone, so getting a little bit more credit as we see now. Gavin Beshin on a bomb. Starting to look like real pipeline out there now. That wave spits. We didn't get a lot of time inside the barrel, but a successful ride. And he's bringing this one right through to the inside, so... Looking uh, like notorious pipeline finally showing up. Look at that thing absolutely draining behind Gavin. But Gavin not quite deep enough. So again, the culprit is he took off right on the apex or even to the left side of the apex. So just a little bit on the shoulder. So by the time he did the hard work, which was making that drop, such a sketchy drop, the barrel was almost finished behind him. If he had the luxury of taking off a little deeper, maybe 10 yards deeper, he'd be Whoa. standing tall in this barrel. He was weightless on the drop then. I love that angle from backdoor looking into the wave. You really get to see how scooped out that bowl is. As we flick back to live action here, Finn McGill tucks in. Wow. Just likes to lean back on that tail and enjoy that view. And again, he just kind of slid over the back door under priority. Standing tall right there, Ronnie. So uh, I think that extra one, maybe two seconds of tube time, uh, you know, it's going to be a solid backup score for Finn. Watch him stand tall right there. There's nothing, no work left to do. You just enjoy it. You've been talking a little bit about just that. They've got a spot here at Pipe. Awesome movement here. And again, it is Finn McGill keeping busy, ducking under this one. Still rolling through this wave, but he got ugly on the inside. Just 16 years of age. Had not be taken advantage of. And here we go. Here is Gavin Besh in the 40-year-old. Doesn't find an exit on this one of these wildcard opportunities here in the Pipe Invitational. And the Brazilian is one of them. And Victor just getting clamped on the end of that ride. Strider, what's the vibe from the, uh, the Bill Billabong? This wave's kind of got a nice little horseshoe bend in it, which shapes up pretty well for backdoor. And it's Joshua Moniz taking off, grabbing hold of that wall, getting some cover. The thing stays open. He looks for the air on the inside. And that is sketchy town. And he decides to kick out right behind him Finn McGill who has been on a roll tucks in he's deep in the barrel but just gets put on his outside rail getting bucked up over the foam ball and he goes down a lost opportunity to possibly shore up a position in the main event there and Gavin now he tucks in but that thing just shuts down on the inside kind of pivoting but on that occasion going over the foam ball, you know, is, is, do you want to have that or do you want to be more front-footed when you're trying to get up over the foam? Yeah, it's it's definitely a good call. He kind of stands tall when he gets barreled. Right there he is, standing tall. You can't help, uh, can't blame him. That wave was so perfect. But that was a square wave, and the shape of the wave was, was the culprit. You know, I think his head got clipped by the lip. So, uh, you know, he's going to need to... When we were going to the break, and we saw a nice looking set wave approach and this is what Victor was able to do. Handled the drop nicely, but you can see where he posi positioned himself before he stood up. 
uh, was what, what hindered him from getting a big score. He was just a little too far on his shoulder. The, uh, the exact opposite for uh, Finn McGill behind him. Perfectly slotted. Not as deep as you can get, but definitely deeper. So behind the curtain, uh, Finn McGill, he's only got a 4.8 and a 5.3. He's easily going to eclipse those scores, Ronnie. Finn McGill's 8.6, and here it is on another angle once again. So just found that opening with a bit of spit. Looks super impressive. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's and he, he, this is his third great wave. Uh, 8.6, but his 5.3 and 4.8 were also impressive, so he's kind of blitzing the field right now. I'd, I'd say he's had the four best waves. Well, he lives nearby, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Lives right up the road for a long time now uh, and has moved up to Pupakea not that long ago. So Gavin, just uh, he is a, a surf turkey. He surfs all day long, every day. Victor has second. And Gavin's just looking to push his score a little higher, make that requirement a little more difficult for his rivals. A bit of cover there. And really milking hard to try and add some points there. And we'd love to see a flurry of rides like in that last semi-final. So just that extra second Gavin took to take the drop, uh, you know, he kind of got detached. He did that in his other big wave too, didn't he, where he kind of got a, a bit of an airdrop. But if you can stay attached to the face and slide down it, that's what guys like John John always do, and that allows him to stall right away. Well, have a look at this one. Swinging on the inside, Victor Bernardo. This is his shot at getting into second position. Looking for a 3.27, but not even a section he could really lay into or, or go to the air on. It just was too bowled out. He didn't chase it down. I thought he'd dart left towards off the wall, but he's letting it go. So one last shot here. Ten seconds to go. Victor Bernardo is not going to get a section to work with. There is a wave out the back. The on-site announcer is counting it down. It's a good-looking backdoor wave. Can he get to his feet in time? The hoot is sounding. And Joshua goes down. I don't think he was actually to his feet in time anyway. Finn's been on fire this year, but this is definitely a bit of an upset when you think about guys like Jack, Jamie O'Brien. Uh, you know, it's just Finn's day. <laughs> Finn feeling the love from the crowd down here at Pipeline. What a result, and I've just been told that Finn will be taking on Keanu Singh and Geordie Smith in the first round.